Let's just talk about this. So apparently it was a drug deal gone wrong. We're talking about marijuana, marijuana people. OK, so you're telling me that three men from Louisiana, they didn't say what part, but from the border to Dallas is a three hour drive. You drove three hours to Dallas where marijuana isn't legal in any capacity, not medicinal, not recreational. But you know where marijuana is legal? Louisiana, yeah. it's medicinally legal. Wow. Circle Live. As you just saw, our next guest is no stranger to television. She's one of the hosts of the nationally syndicated news and entertainment program, Daily Blast Live. And she has no problem voicing her opinion. Please welcome Erica Kahn. Yay! Yay! Hey, Erica girl. Yes. I am so honored to be here. Oh, really? This black girl magic. Yes. You guys are not, you're a sister show. Like, right. I... I stand for y'all. Thank, thank you. So thank you. you. Absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here. Obviously, that moment went viral. Mm. What made you say, let me stand As up for what I know? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because things that go viral are never planned. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and it's what's happening it's in the moment. Mm -hmm. And we have a situation where, you know, there are, a, we're co all coming from very different places. Mm -hmm. And it's different levels of understanding. Yeah. And I think that we're very fortunate mm -hmm. to have people who aren't of color yes. who really do want to understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you start to get situations where, you wake up and you hear about Joshua Brown. And <laughs> that hurt my soul, like that hurt my yeah, soul. Yes. Because I couldn't stop seeing my brother, right. I couldn't stop seeing my cousins. Um, these are young men, um, this is a product of the shooting of Botham Jean. Yes. So the idea that it took not one, but two of our brothers um, was just powerful to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I just had to say something in that moment because I was really feeling that. And the fact that we had gotten into a group text about it on that Sunday before to say, if they say that it was black people who did it, I'm gonna have a problem with it. So I was kind of already sitting on G. You were ready right. for it. Yeah. Sitting on yeah. G. Yeah. Sitting on G. I am yeah. so waiting happy on. that you are sitting on G, waiting on O. <laughs> I'm very proud of you for that. But we have an opportunity here at Sister Circle to always speak up for the community, African American people. I mean, it is welcomed here. It's a little different where you are, you know. Um, so, but, and then when you, when you do stick up for your community, it's kind of like people take offense to that. How do you handle that? And what's, what, what was the reaction? Yeah. to some of the comments that you received? Um, you know, I, I think it's interesting because people are offended by us just by us being us. Oh, okay. um, they, they, you know, yeah, yeah. So I have kind of gotten over the idea of people taking offense to what I'm saying okay. because I think that it's important for people to see a black woman telling things from our level of understanding, mm -hmm. especially with the diversity on the panel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I am married to a man who is Italian Icelandic from Canada. Mm -hmm. So these conversations are things that we have at our dinner table right, of course. Um, all the time. And I'm used to talking to someone who isn't from where I'm from, mm -hmm. but really tries to understand and get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'm used to a little bit more acceptance, but I think it's important that people show who they are. Yes. I would rather know that you have an issue with what I'm saying than think that you're for me when you're really against me. Mm -hmm. So I think that a lot of people have um, kind of chosen sides and then you can understand where they stand because I don't like to guess who people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Well, you we know, you've always know. been your authentic Self. And we all know it's really, really difficult, especially when you're in the limelight, being an African American woman and rocking her natural hair on a pile of It's so pretty. It is so pretty. Yes, it's amazing. I'm telling you, one of these days I'm gonna take these locks out and wear that natural hair I have going on over here. But but can you tell us, can you walk us through your journey in choosing to remain true to who you are? Uh, you know, I decided to go natural um, in, well, February was when the whole reveal happened. And thank you all for, because I know that you spoke about it. Mm -hmm. I know you showed yeah. the, um, the reveal. Um, it was really important to me to get to a place with myself where I felt comfortable mm -hmm. um, wearing my hair naturally. Yes. Because I don't think that there is a hierarchy on hair. Mm -hmm. I don't think one hairstyle is better than the other or more important. What I do think is that I 
personally, Erica Cobb, um, had gotten to a place where I was using hair as a crutch mm. and I was hiding. But it wasn't the hair that I was hiding, it was everything about me that I wow. was hiding. Okay. Um, I had really subscribed to something that I was trying to be what everyone else needed me to be and wanted me to be. And by do going natural, it was exactly what every the opposite of what mm -hmm. everyone was telling me to do. And I felt like that gave me a certain degree of freedom mm -hmm. because I'm not the YouTube, you know, like this is going natural, the YouTube viral video type thing. Mm -hmm. I am the every day, this is what happened to me after neglecting my hair for the past 20 days because, mm -hmm. or 20 years, because I was a hair neglector. Mm -hmm. I'll be very honest about it. Um, so I had to learn and my hair had to learn and, and we had to have this relationship with each other. Uh, relationship with and, your hair. Yeah, and we're still talking every morning. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, what would you like to do today? Yes. Are you going to cooperate? Are you not going to cooperate? Mm -hmm. and, and that was something that it had to give me um, a sense of vulnerability so mm -hmm. that I could push past my own right. issues. Right. Yeah. Well, ladies, it's we time. are going to actually keep Erica yes. for another segment to talk about hot topics coming up momentarily. Ooh, yes. Yes. That's going to be a good one. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. 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 These topics are something else. What, what are <laughs> something, something else? else. <laughs> Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We kept our sister Erica here to take on some of today's hot topics. Yes, yes. Because Erica be having it all going on. <laughs> she like us. She like to be real messy. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, no. let's start off with Reverend Kanye West. <laughs> Reverend yes. West. Sunday service at down to the Joe Osteen's church. Okay. Praise God. Okay. Uh, Erica, yes. what say you? Okay, so I have to be transparent about this. Do your thing. I have one tattoo, and it's on the top of my foot, and it says, Jesus walks with me. Mm -hmm. So I'm a girl from Chicago. Um, I grew up a Kanye fan. Mm -hmm. This is interesting to me because anyone who's been born again, just discovering Christ in their life, um, tends to act like this. Yeah, they're very excited. Very excited yeah. about it. Movies. Um, mm -hmm. I think you add another layer because it's Kanye, and we're mm -hmm. used to him being unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I'm for this. Um, I'm for the idea of like churches or the idea of organized religion not being having to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. I think that people can worship however they want to worship. Um, and I don't know if I want to really go in on Kanye about it because I think that whatever he's doing, it's his way. Well, Snoop Dogg did it, didn't he? True. Yeah. yeah. He had his album. Yeah. yeah. That's, but see, that's just the thing. It's his way. Should mm. it be God's way? Or oh. should it be his way? I I love Kanye. Y'all know I mm. love Kanye. I mean, right. I'm me. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I, I feel like, and this is Selena talking, mm -hmm. sometimes you want the people to worship and hear you and not really worship and hear the word of God. That's just my personal feeling. Now, I love the music. I love how you flip in the messages. I think that those things are amazing and can bring more people to God eventually. You know what I'm saying? But when they get there, what will you do? What is your message then? Do you leave them there? Because I remember when we went on tour in the beginning and the song was Jesus Walks. And I looked at him and I said, and this is when he was just Kanye doing his thing. He had the entire audience, Jesus, walk with me. And I, I saw the power in that. Mm -hmm. This is not that to mm -hmm. me. Do you think that it could be a portal for people who would never have discovered Christ or discovered religion? Once they get there, then what? Then they, they are going to join different that churches. Point. They're going to get under the leadership of different churches in their own past. Do you think that, but do you think that they, now here's the thing. I'm not saying that, you know, the God, God can use anything in any right, avenue to right. get to get the people, but we just have to be kind of careful, guys. We got to be careful. We can't just, oh, well, everybody who loves the Lord and everybody who does it, we can't forget certain concepts that were just said five minutes ago and, and movements that were just done. And then, and then when people are new in Christ, they're excited, but they're not as judgmental, you know, as, as his, he's, has he's seemingly become, yeah. which is weird to me because he's been a very inclusive guy 
but then now not. It's just very confusing. I, I really don't have a, I just really don't know what's going on here. He's been like all over the place, like, I don't know. Well, I, just want, yeah, I also want us to be mindful that God says, and he will use any and mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah, and I think true. you he noticed that, that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I had yeah. said that, but Kinda. so does the devil. <laughs> Well, let's he move used on. people too. Let's let's move on to Colin Kaepernick and your thoughts on you know what transpired over the weekend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so here's the thing: um, the lack of transparency seems to be used um, as a very calculated move. Um, in general, mm -hmm. um, I do think that to calculate on whose behalf. It, on the NFL. Okay, very yeah. good. And um, I have been. <laughs> you're like, well, you just got to let the people know. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is me <laughs> stepping along. Um, <laughs> I have been, be I've been an NFL season ticket holder for the past five seasons. Mm -hmm. So, like, I do have an actual investment in mm -hmm. what's happening. Um, but, you know, here you have an organization that was really called out on the carpet. Mm -hmm. They were um, thrown out there in a way that they've never been checked before. Right. And not only did we see it in real time in the news, we also see it play out in pop culture. We're seeing it play out in things like ballers, mm -hmm. um, oh, yes. how we're having those conversations differently because it's giving the audience a different way to see things. Um, Colin Kaepernick was basically railroaded and used as a political pawn for mm -hmm. quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, now he is in his power because we don't know what the settlement was, um, but we do know there was a settlement, right. which means that the power dynamic has changed. Um, people get really uncomfortable when power dynamics shift. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you better so, say it, girl. Well, yes. <laughs> what also I mean, means that he, that they, that's kind of like admitting that you did something. Right. So when that's he's true, saying team. he wants the press there, he wants why the not? press there because right. why would there be any reason to yeah. hide something? That's like what that. I'm saying. What, what's the big hide? Yeah. If, yeah. if it's all good and you know he, well, you, he, what you said is true. Everybody knows that the NFL is not exactly flourishing with great mm. quarterbacks, so yeah. that's what the hide is. Uh, uh, okay. yeah, Except for the Ravens. <laughs> Come on, Lamar Jackson. They can get them. They can use them on the Bears, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Erica, you are a, just a wealth of knowledge. Yes. We thank you so much thank for being you. here today. Yes. And, uh, so your much. presence is just is just lovely. And, and continue success on Daily Blessed Live and whatever's next for you. Yes. Absolutely. Can I just say, I came to Atlanta to sit here with you. So oh. when are one of you coming to Daily Blessed? Oh. I, I just said that to one Let's of our producers. Yes. yes. I really did. Uh -huh. Or all four of you. Oh. Erica can come back here. Yes, yes, yes. 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 throwing that on the table. Yes, but we accept the invitation. Yes. Yes. We do. Yes. So be sure to catch this yes. lovely woman on Daily Blast Live. You can check your local listings for time. But don't you move uh, because up next, revealing our Grateful Glam Makeover Squad. Say yes. Yes. Thank you, Erica. Yeah, girl, you can come here all the time. <laughs> <laughs>